Hello, I'm Jan. I'm here to talk to you about my sound destroyer system. This is a project I've been working on for a while in a bunch of different ways. Um, it's about destroying sounds, and I've built a bunch of objects and instruments that use this system, but I wanted to show you the engine and encourage you to download it and play with it yourselves and maybe learn from it or make your own versions or whatever. So uh, I'll show you first how it works, which I hope will maybe make clear what I mean by sound destroying. And I'll use it as a sampler first, and then I will use it to load a sound file and then permanently destroy that sound file. And you and then maybe at the end I'll show some advanced stuff uh, which is just a fun way of using it. So let's start. Uh, this is my sound destroyer engine which is what I use in all the instruments and stuff that I've made uh, that use this sound destroyer system. It's made in pure data so if you want to play around with this you need to download pure data and install that. It's like a graphical programming system you may already know how to use pure data. If so, you can download it and then you can tear this apart and use your own version. So what the Sound Destroyer engine is primarily is a sampler. So you can click on the record sound button and while this is clicked, it will record a sample in. So let's just do that right away. Okay, so there's my sound um, and on the surface, all you need to do to get playing with this is to press play. And you can hear it, it, it loops the sound automatically. Now, the way it's working is that it's playing the sound file back by using this these wave tables that are underneath. There's two, there's one for the left and one for the right. And what a wavetable does is it kind of uh, tells where in the sound file to play at any given moment. So you can see when it's playing, this little thing is moving across to show where in the wavetable it's playing. And the bottom left corner is the beginning of the sound buffer, and the top right corner is the end of the sound buffer. So it's just going through the sound file from beginning to end in a straight line. Now what's fun about wavetable playback is that you can modify that wavetable. So let's play this again. And what I'll just do is just draw on these wavetables manually with the mouse. So you can hear it gets pretty wacky pretty quickly when you're drawing manually, especially because What's ending up happening is like it's scrubbing through that sound file in loads of different directions. When it goes down this way, it means it's going backwards. The slope is roughly the pitch. Uh, so here, down here on the right channel, you can see it gets a very um, shallow slope, which means it will suddenly play it very slowly, but backwards. Um, and we can always reset the wavetables by clicking this button and it'll turn to nice flat lines again. I should also say that there's this little section over here for adjusting the playback speed and for playing it in reverse. And of course, you can combine that with any changes you make to the wavetable. If you use a short enough sample, you could presumably even use this as some kind of um, wavetable synthesizer thing. But for now, let's go back to resetting the wavetables. So that's fun, and that's just a fun, pretty standard method of playing with wavetables. What I've integrated to make this more of a sound automatic sound destroyer system is what I've called my little glitch system. So every time I click this button, it will into it will insert a little glitch into my wavetables. So you can see it's not inserting a glitch into the sound file up here, but actually only into the wavetable. Now, what these glitches look like 
depends on these two sliders here, my glitch length range and my glitch slope range. Length is roughly, is, is, is the x-axis basically, and slope is the y-axis. But what it's doing is setting, what this slider does is it sets the maximum potential random number that it can reach. So it doesn't mean, uh, it, each, each glitch that I place in will be random there will be, every time I press the button, it will be one on the left channel and one on the right channel. They'll be different. Um, but the maximum range is set by these sliders. So if these sliders are both very low, let's reset the wavetables, you'll see just very short, small um, uh, glitches. If I make them longer, very long, then you'll start seeing a mix of small ones and huge ones. There are some big ones there. And, but the slopes are all extremely shallow because that range is very low. Here you start seeing a much broader range of slopes, a very long one, a slightly less long one. There's a very sharp one in the middle there. Um, there's some another mix. And sometimes glitches can obviously overwrite previous glitches. So let's put these into a more kind of in middle ground here. And I'll play the sound and I'll start inserting some glitches. I'll put the pitch back to normal. So this is very similar to me drawing. It's just a much more um, accurate way of inserting glitches. It means that like the glitches will all be actual linear and they won't jump quite as much. And it can mean uh, a more, in my opinion, a more satisfying sort of glitch aesthetic. And it also gives you a fair amount of control with a nice little balance of randomness in there as well. Now, the extra feature I've included on my glitch system is what I've called the auto glitch. And what that does is it will automatically press this glitch button for me. So if I have that on, you'll see it flash regularly. And it will insert a glitch according to these parameters. And of course I can adjust this playback speed and do this in reverse if I want. I can also in record a new sample at the same time. If I find a if I find a loop I like, I can just leave it there. Now at this stage, I can still always reset this wavetable and get it back to the original sample, uh, sort of unglitched sample. <laughs> You can hear some of the previous sample overlaid on there because I'm just using built-in speakers, but you get the idea that that is just now back to my original. All those glitches that I had drawn in there are lost. I can't go back to them. Once I hit reset, I can attempt to add more new glitches in, but they're not gonna be the same as the glitches that were there before. Now, that's all very fun, but as you can tell, I've just gone back to another sample, right? Hello. Hello, 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 right? So I'm not actually losing the sound. And that's where the sound destroying part comes in. Now, I have an extra little button down here uh, called permanence, a little switch, I should say, called permanence. If I click this, then any glitches that I insert and which are played back will be overwritten into the original file. So let's make a new sample here. <laughs> Great, and I'm going to put some glitches in. Now, 
the permanent switch was overwritten there and you can actually see that my sound file, the look of it has changed. That's because even if I reset this wavetable and turn off permanence, you'll hear that my sample, the original sample that I recorded has now been overwritten by the glitched version of it. And now even though this is a totally straight wavetable, it's a totally straight wavetable playing a glitched out sample. So. It takes a little time for this to, to update. So now my sample is really starting to get completely lost and there's only the tiniest little bit of hint of the original sample. And that's because I set the auto glitch on, it's banging that glitch a ton of times and it's permanently overwriting the original sample. So that's how I'm kind of using this as a sampler and a, a way of creatively playing with destruction as a tool. Now there is another way that you can use this tool and that's to take a sound recording, a sound file, and actually destroy it permanently as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off permanence, turn off auto glitch, da da da. And now what I'm going to do is, is choose a file. I'm going to choose a sound recording to actually destroy. So let's go into my sounds folder. Here we go. And I'll pick a a uh, sound recording of some drums. This is a cool one. So that's a nice sample. I can glitch it. It'll sound pretty cool, I think. Pretty nice. Now, if I click this permanence button and play this sound, it will actually overwrite that sound file on my disk. So I'm going to be permanently changing this file, and it will record it to over the original file. So let's have a look on my hard drive here and you'll see date modified I can do because there it is it's just been modified now and let's listen to it there we go so that sample has been recorded over it's been changed and if I set up my auto glitch and play it You can really hear the sound being destroyed there. And in most cases, if you leave it on with settings like this, after a certain point this will fade down to just white noise and then totally disappear. You can hear it fading there. It along a bit. Uh, 
And again, if we go into the file here, that's it. That sound file has now been destroyed and the content that was in it is no longer listenable. So you can do that with any sound file you want. Um, I've been doing it with all sorts of different kinds of sound files. It can be quite a powerful thing. Now the one last thing I'll show you uh, is a sort of fun advanced experimental version uh, way of using this. Now one thing you can do is take this uh, sound destroyer, let's call it a module, and you can duplicate it and you just need to change the number up here. You do this in pure data uh, by going into edit mode, selecting it, and then duplicating it, command D, and then still in edit mode, you have to go up here and change this number. Now each one of these numbers needs to be different. There needs to be a little identifier basically to tell, tell um, which, uh, which sound is what. But now we can actually layer three different types of destroying it on each other, which is basically just like a fun multi-track looper with this destroyer twist, right? So we can go and and there we There we go. So that's the sound destroyer. And I hope you found that interesting, or maybe you didn't. That's okay, too. I don't actually really mind whether you did or not. <laughs> if you watched this far, you probably found it interesting. And uh, it, certainly I'll put all the links to the GitHub to this and um, in the code for this video. I would love for you to download it and play with it yourself. And especially, yeah, take some of your sound files and destroy them. It can be quite a powerful thing to play with. Thanks for watching. Bye.